hey welcome back to the channel guys in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you how to create this a slide transition inside hitfilm express so as you can see i have these two images already loaded up in hitfilm express i'm going to create a new composite shot and call it main duration is going to be six seconds long 920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second click on ok i'm going to create another composite shot i'm going to call this one image one and uh, actually uh, so I'm just going to duplicate this uh, main composite shot and call this image 1 duplicate it again and I'm just going to call this image 2 okay and the image 1 I'm going to duplicate again and call this image 1.1 1 .1. and image 2 I'm going to duplicate it and call this image 2.2 .2. And uh, I'm also on the image 1.1. .1. I'm going to click on the color icon and change its duration to around three seconds and do the same thing with image 2.2. .2. Three seconds and click on OK. Now let's double click on image 1 and image 2. And in the image 1, I'm going to drag in my first image. And you can see the we have to scale it down like that. I'm going to open up the image to composite shot and drag in the second image transform and scale it down like that okay now let's close these composite shots and now we will double click on image 1.1 and 2.2 in the image 1.1 we just grab the image one composite shot and put it under the timeline and we do the same thing image 2 by 2 composite shot and drag in the image 2 composite shot in this so now let's work on the first image right here i'm going to create two copies of this so duplicate it twice and uh, now what we have to do is i want this image i want basically i want three cop three sections of this image uh, the top the middle and the bottom so um how can I do that? I can simply create a mask, um, but I don't know what size it should be. I want the mask that I create, I want it to be have the same uh, length, um, but I also want it to be, you know, divide this image uh, or cut this image uh, equally. So uh, I can, so how do I do that? So basically if I just open up the calculator, uh, we know the height of our composition is 1080 so uh, I can just divide 1080 by 3 because we need three sections and we get this value the 360 so this is actually the height of what our mask should be so I can just select the mask but if I draw the mask like that I have no idea how much uh, is 360 pixels of this mask so if I just Put it somewhere over there there is uh, nothing that is going to tell me that the height of this mask is 360 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new play layer and uh, let's call this uh let's leave it as it is let's just change the height to 360 and hit ok and i'm going to move this to the very top like that let's go inside new play one go to transform and you can see the position is at 360 now uh, let's select the image the top most composite shot i'm going to zoom in and uh, make sure it's selected zoom in and use the rectangular mouse tool or your mouse cursor in the corner like this and create a mask like that and once you do this once you do that we just have to select the freehand mask tool and you can get this you'll get these points just click on the point which is in the top right corner hold the control key and select the point uh, in the bottom right corner and now i'm going to hold the shift key on the keyboard and hold the right arrow key and just drag it and put it right at the edge like that so if you can you can also zoom into this and see if it is really at the edge or not so something like that 
and once you have it you can basically get rid of the new plane one we don't want that and now if i turn the these two layers off you can see that we have the top portion of this image and now we all we want the middle and the bottom section so i can just copy the mask and paste it on the second composite chart we'll mask will transform and we can just move it down like that should be around negative 360 okay and I'm gonna copy this mask and paste it on the other composite shot go transform and move it down to around negative 720 and now we have the bottom the middle and the top okay now we're going to do the same thing with this composite chart right here duplicate it twice and i can just uh copy this mask and paste it on this very first image copy the second mask paste it on the second layer copy the third mask and paste it on the third layer okay uh, and now we have the bottom the middle and the top as well okay now let's uh, animate our first image or the first slide we can go to effects and search for an effect called spherical warp apply it on the top most layer expand the spherical warp and set the amount to zero let's move to the very end of this timeline create a shift texture x keyframe and uh, right at that time or at that uh, where our player is we are going to shift the texture to negative 0 0.50 let's move 20 frames back i'm going to set this to zero so now we have this kind of animation it's kind of slow uh, i don't know why maybe it might be because due to this the size of this image is really massive so let's just turn this to maybe like half playback quality and this should be draft now oh, it's still still lagging anyways let's continue with our tutorial and let's copy the spherical warp and paste it on the image which is at the very bottom let's go to spherical warp and what i want to do is um before I do this, let's undo this. I don't want this filter up on the bottom image. I want to select these two keyframes and convert it to manual bezier. Go to value graph. And I want to grab this handle and drag it all the way to the right. Like that. Now I'm going to copy this spherical warp and paste it on the image or the composite shot, which is at the bottom. Now on the second keyframe, I want it to be positive 0.50. Now if I zoom into the timeline, I can see that I can actually move this to the right, the last keyframe. And now let's just do this with our first image or the first composite shot as well. Okay, now we have that. Let's go to our second image. And again, do the same thing. Apply the spherical warp on the topmost layer. Set its amount to zero. Now on the very first keyframe, we're going to create a shift texture Y keyframe. Set this to positive 0 0.50 move 10 frames forward set this back to zero select these two keyframes convert it to manual bezier go into value graph and create a curve like this then go back copy the spherical warp paste it on the layer which is at the bottom and on the very first keyframe i want this to be negative 5 0 0.50 so you can see the movement is going to be in the opposite direction so now we have that let's go to main comp and i'm going to drag the image 1.1 1 .1 and image 2.2 into the timeline want the image 2.2 uh, be right over here right after the first clip and now you can see that we have this transition from one image to other but we can further improve this so let's create a new grade layer and uh, 
let's go right in the middle at three second i'm going to move 10 frames forward and cut this layer there so just cut it and delete this part and let's go back let's from the three second mark i'm going to move 10 frames back and again cut this layer so now we can get rid of this part right here and on this grid layer we are going to apply an effect which is a warp effect uh, it's in warp action cam lens distort on this layer and then we are going to play around with the uh, let's see field of view yeah let's create a keyframe for field of view right at the beginning well not actually 10 frames um let me just undo that wait a minute uh we want it to be 20 frames long so let's go back to three seconds uh move 10 uh, and 20 frames back cut this layer and delete this part let's move back to three seconds and move 20 frames forward cut this layer and delete this part right here so now uh Right at this portion, right at this part, where well, we will apply the action, action cam lens distort effect. Create a FOV field of view keyframe. Let's move 20 frames forward, create the same keyframe. Let's move 20 frames forward and create the same keyframe. So now uh, in the keyframe, which is in the middle, I'm going to increase the field of view uh, to around, let's say, 90. I'm gonna reverse this and I am going to set the scale anchor to height. So now uh, we will have something like that. I'm gonna select these keyframes, convert to Manuel Bezier, go into value graph, and uh, maybe I should leave it as it is. I don't want to change the graph. So let's see uh, how it looks. So we had that kind of. A distortion and the transition going on so uh, that is pretty much it that's how we can create this um, transition and uh, uh, you can just so this is the non destructive way I can uh, double click on image 1 and image 2 and I can just replace it with a different image so let's say I have not this was not the right example so let's say um, I have this image gonna put it at the top replace it I can delete the previous image and I can like scale it down like that maybe move it up a little and on the second composite shot the image too I can delete this image and replace it with another one so let's do this one transform and scale it down move it up a bit something like that and if you go back to our main comp, you can see the changes are taking place in our main animation. So like I can play it and can we have the same animation. So um, that is pretty much it. I hope uh, you learned something new. If you did, please do consider liking the video. Also subscribing to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.